10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. From chip shortages to blue light, in the next 10 minutes, we'll get the lowdown on what's up with the latest tech. I'm Bethany Van Delft, and this is the 10 News. You probably noticed it's nearly impossible to buy a PlayStation 5 these days, even though the console was released back in November, more than five months ago. So what's keeping PS5s and tons of other high-demand electronics off the shelves these days? A global chip shortage. Oh, man. Chips are those teeny little wafers that make up the memory and processing units of most modern computers. During COVID, people have been stuck at home with nothing to do except work on their laptops, spend time on their smartphones, or play video games. This led to an increased demand for electronics that require these chips. Pair that with the already high demand for electronics and a shrinking chip making industry And what you have is a global chip shortage in a nutshell. Where's my chips? Oh, we're not having chips tonight, Munchkin. Sorry. I want my chips. So what's next? Some people in the tech industry have expressed optimism that things could return to normal relatively soon, while others think it could be 2022 before that happens. Have you ever found it hard to go to sleep after watching a show on Netflix? Do your grown-ups have a screen cutoff time before bed? Guess what? There's a good reason why. Our favorite father-daughter duo, Jacob and Olivia Rosenzweig from the Curious Kid podcast, have the lowdown. When people think about what it takes to be healthy, two things usually come to mind. In order to be healthy, you need to one, eat healthy, and two, exercise. What if I told you that there is a third, often overlooked thing you can do to make sure you are healthy and fit? In order to be healthy, you need to sleep well. According to a study by the Centers for Disease Control, most kids don't get enough sleep. If you are between the ages of 6 and 12, at least 9 hours of sleep is recommended. If you are a teen, at least eight hours of sleep is recommended. Today, there are more reasons than ever that kids just don't get enough sleep. There are so many distractions that keep kids from getting the sleep they need to refresh their bodies and minds. One of the biggest sleep disruptors is technology. That's right, computers, televisions, tablets, and phones may be keeping you from getting the high quality sleep you need to be at your best. Our bodies have a built-in clock that tells us when it's time to wake up and when it's time to sleep. Well, there are no actual clocks in our bodies, but there are hormones that are responsible for waking us up and lulling us to sleep. In the morning, our bodies make a hormone called cortisol that helps you feel awake and alert and ready to tackle the day. And at nighttime, the body makes melatonin that makes you feel sleepy. Studies show that screen time within an hour or two of bedtime delays the release of melatonin, keeping you awake longer. Using electronics before bedtime can even reduce the quality of sleep you get once you fall asleep. The reason this happens is because the blue light that comes from our screens interferes with the release of melatonin in our bodies. Lots of blue light isn't good for our eyes and can cause things like eye strain or headaches. They even make glasses you can wear or screen protectors you can put on your devices to help shield your eyes from blue light. And all that stuff is great, but the best thing to do to make sure you get a good night's sleep is to limit screen time before bedtime and find some relaxing activities to do just before bed, like reading. Or listening to the 10 News. Up next, it's time for... Fact Attack! What if your shirt could recharge your Switch? 
Sounds a little crazy, but someday it actually might. Scientists are working on making a one-of-a-kind battery out of fabric. In 2018, a team of researchers at Binghamton University in New York created a cloth-based battery that was able to generate stable electricity even while it was being stretched and twisted. Lead researcher Sakian Choi said that this could really be important for the future of wearable technology. And the best part is what powers this battery. Bacteria. Ew! So the sweat pouring off your body might one day be what gives your Fitbit its juice. I mean, it's cool. It's science. But it's also... Hi, my name is Elliot Camille. It's time for your trivia question of the day. In what year was the very first video game introduced? Was it A, 1980, B, 1972, or C, 1958? Did you guess it? The answer is... C! A nuclear physicist named William Higginbotham created an electronic tennis game he called Tennis for Two way back in 1958. It was introduced to visitors at the Brookhaven National Laboratory in Upton, New York, during the lab's annual Visitor's Day. Some argue that because Higginbotham's game technically uses oscilloscopes, a kind of electronic test instrument, and not video, it should not be considered the first video game. But you gotta hand it to him for creating a game that let two players control a movable ball on a screen. That was something no one had ever done before. Time's up! But before we go, here's a quick note for the grown-ups. Want even more great content from the 10 News? Sign up for the 10 News Newsletter, a.k.a. the 10 News Letter. It's a free bi-weekly email with even more stories to enjoy together, and we made it easy for you. The link to join is in the show notes and on our website, the10news.com. Thanks for listening to The 10 News. Look out for our new episodes on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and extras on Saturdays. The 10 News is a co-production of Small But Mighty Media and Next Chapter Podcasts, and is distributed by iHeartRadio. The production and editorial team is the glitch-free gaming group of Tracy Crooks, Pete Musto, Ben Austin DeCampo, Andrew Hall, Jenner Pasqua, Stephen Tompkins, and Sarah Olander. Jacob and Olivia Rosenzweig contributed to this episode. Our production director is Jeremiah Tittle, and The 10 News is executive produced by Donald Albright and show creator Tracy Leeds Kaplan. Special thanks to listener Elliot Camille for helping with the trivia question. Do you want to be part of the show? Have a grown-up help you record a question, a joke, or a fun fact you want to share and email it to us at hello at the10news.com and show your love for the 10 News by going to your favorite podcast app and submitting a rating and review because it really helps others find the show so they can join the fun too. I'm Bethany Van Delft, and thanks for listening to the 10 News. Maybe one day, stinky foot bacteria can make us run faster than a cheetah. I'll get right on that. <laughs>